Welcome artists! You will get a quick introduction to the world of clay and ceramics. Clay is what we call the form before it is transformed into a finished piece. When it has been fired and glazed, we call it ceramics. So how is clay made? First, it is gathered from the earth. Then it is mixed with water and forms into what we call slip. You'll notice that slip is like a liquid version of clay. The slip is left until it absorbs the water and air, turning it into clay. In its clay form, it is soft and can be worked into many objects and forms. Once it is shaped into an object, it needs to be left out to dry. At this stage, it is called bone dry. When it is bone dry, that means it's ready for its first firing in the kiln. A kiln is a special oven where the clay is fired to over 1200 degrees. Once it's cooled and ready to be painted or glazed, we call that bisqueware. Finally, the bisqueware is dipped or painted with glaze and will need to be fired again. When it is cooled, it is now a ceramic piece. This process takes many weeks, so be patient. Today, you will have an opportunity to experiment with clay. During this day of experimentation and play, here are the expectations. One, we will not be keeping anything you make today. At the end of class, you will roll your clay back into a ball and it will be used again with another class. The purpose of experimenting with clay today is for you to get a good feel of how clay works. We will be creating a clay project the next time you come to art. Two, clay stays in the art room. Once your projects are fired and finished, that is the only time the clay will leave the art studio. And three, use the clay tools in a safe and appropriate manner. Remember that our studio is built around trust if I can't trust you with the clay supplies, we will not be able to work with clay in the future. Now, here are a few key things to know when you are working with clay today. Air bubbles. Sometimes air can get trapped in clay. This is not a good thing because if it was fired in the kiln, those air bubbles can pop and break your clay piece. In order to get rid of air bubbles, we need to wedge the clay. Wedging the clay just means pushing out those air bubbles. If you've ever worked with dough or bread, kneading the dough is similar. You push with the palm of your hand or lightly pound the clay against the surface to push out any air bubbles. Remember, I said lightly pound. I should not see or hear any slamming of clay. Pinching is a common technique when using clay, but something important to keep in mind is thickness. If you pinch your clay too thin, it will easily break when it is bone dry. Try to keep the thickness of your clay as thick as your thumb. That way it is strong and won't break off when it dries. A coil is when you roll a piece of clay into a rope. Using your hands and rolling back and forth you can create a coil. Coils also need to be the thickness of your thumb. Often, you will want to attach two pieces of clay together. If you place the two pieces of clay together, when the clay is bone dry, it will just dry separately and fall right off each other. You will need to use a technique we call score and slip. Score is when you use a tool to scratch a crisscross texture into the area of the clay that you want to attach. Score both areas of the pieces you want attached. Slip, again, refers to that wet clay mixture and we can use the slip as glue to attach the pieces together. To help it adhere even more, smooth out the edges so it looks like one piece of clay. Score and slip is one of the most important techniques to know when working with clay. After you've worked with a piece of clay sometime, you may notice that it gets cold and hard. This means it's starting to dry. 
you will need to apply some moisture to your clay to keep it soft. But don't add too much water, otherwise it will turn into slip and it will not hold its shape. You'll know you added too much water if your hands become sticky or muddy. Your hands should always feel dry and not stick to the clay. Once you've added some water to your dry clay, you'll need to wedge it to incorporate the water into the clay. Finally, the last tip when working with clay is to not create any sharp edges. When clay is fired, it will harden and any sharp edges will not be safe to handle. Make sure you are rounding the edges so your clay is safe to be touched and held. Remember, today is an experimenting day. We will not keep what you make. We want you to get a good feel for how clay works. And try some of the techniques we talked about in this demonstration. Now let's get to art making.